uh, hard work. But the shift for me allows me now to work with WWF and it enables me to live out my life's purpose. To make lasting change to protect our environment and all of which I could not do without the loving support of my husband, Jerry. So thank you, Jerry, give away. <laughs> Jerry and I have been members of St. Mark's for 17 years, and we enjoy the fellowship, the sense of community, and enduring support that St. Mark's provides to us and in raising our three children. And I've been thrilled to see that St. Mark's has taken on the mission of creation care, and the stewardship of God's creation is a biblical principle that is something that brings me closer to the church. And this mission really resonates with me. I used to think that top environmental problems were biodiversity loss, ecosystem collapse, and climate change. And I thought with good science, we could fix those things. But I was wrong. I have learned, working with WWF, that the top environmental problems are selfishness, greed, and apathy. And to deal with these, we need a spiritual and a cultural revolution. And me as a scientist, and I, I use the term loosely, I don't know how to do that. And if I did, I certainly couldn't do it alone. So now on to what we're here to talk about today, uh, plastic pollution. It's estimated that around 8 million tons of plastic waste enters the world's oceans every year. And these numbers are projected to increase four times by 2050. And this will have devastating impacts on wildlife, our ocean, and on us. So a business as usual scenario is just not in the cards at the moment. Since the year 2000, the plastic industry has produced more than half of all the plastic that has ever been made. And in the 21st century, usage has grown rapidly as plastic is cheap, it's reliable, and it's versatile. So, as a result, more plastic is disposed of after a single use. At least 75% of plastic ever produced is already waste. And a third of this plastic waste is estimated to have entered into nature as land, fresh water, and marine pollution because of mismanaged waste management practices. So in Newfoundland, we pride ourselves on our dramatic coastlines, sweeping barrens, thick boreal forests, ancient rock formations, the natural and wild beauty of this place surrounds you at every turn, and we can often take it for granted. And if we look closely enough, also what surrounds us is plastic. Plastic pollution is choking our ocean, poisoning marine life, and affecting human health and livelihoods in a way that we are now only beginning to understand. Entanglement of wildlife often leads to death of animals, and scientists are finding a growing number of freshwater and marine animals that have eaten litter by accident. Ingesting litter can affect animals' ability to eat, and breathe and move, leading to starvation, choking or fatal poisoning. And as an example, sea turtles may eat plastic bags because they look like jellyfish, but it clogs the turtle's digestive tracts and the air trapped in the bag also makes it difficult for the turtles to dive. There's also huge impact of microplastics, one that's been in the news a little more frequently in the past couple of years. They're very challenging to collect. Um, so it's best that we can target plastics uh, before they get to this state through um, the decrease of our reliance on single-use plastics. So humans, us, we're most likely to ingest plastic. We eat this plastic from seafood, particularly shellfish, mussels, or oysters. And a U.S. study found <coughs> microplastic contamination in 241 of 259 bottles of water sourced from 11 different brands and purchased in nine countries. So this plastic we're ingesting through seafood, through the bottled water that we drink. <coughs> and 
the marine plastic pollution is not just a, a problem in Canada, it's a global problem. It's a transboundary problem. Litter or microplastics has been detected in all part of the planet's marine environment and it's not contained by na national borders. And the plastic waste that originates in one country can end up virtually all around the globe. The plastic economy is global and waste management systems are also global. So this is why the problem of marine plastic pollution cannot be solved by a regional level or even a national level, we really have to take a global approach. And WWF Canada works on all three levels. Uh, we work on uh, the global level by advocating change, working directly with ministers of environment to create international treaties to ban marine plastic pollution. Uh, we work with businesses in Canada on their plastic strategies to reduce their internal plastic use. And we also work with local communities uh, through the Great Canadian Shoreline Cleanup. So I have a few slides here to look at the findings of our annual cleanup and why the, the volunteers that we have track the data that we do. Our annual cleanup uh, can take place uh, pretty much anywhere across Canada. Uh, uh, volunteers or leaders who want to uh, lead a cleanup can sign up on our website. And there's a network of cleanups hosted um, in many communities across the country, all year round, anywhere that land connects to water. So shorelines can come in many forms, and um, it doesn't necessarily have to be along a riverbank or the, the, an ocean beach where you want to conduct a shoreline cleanup. Our shorelines could be uh, within along rivers that flow to the ocean, it can be within forests, and the picture that I had shown earlier was of the plastic forest uh, just behind the, um, the Logie Bay Waste Management Facility. And there is, um, you know, how much effort that it would take in terms of cleaning up the plastic in that area will still never reduce the amount of plastic that continues to blow outside of that waste management facility from year to year. Uh, creating uh, impact and risk to our ocean animals. And when you look at where shoreline litter comes from, and it's not just plastic litter within the, the stuff that comes in through the shoreline cleanup, uh, but really it's through all of our activities, recreational activities, uh, there's a lot of uh, litter associated with uh, smoking, we see cigarette butts quite a bit, uh, we see a lot of uh, um, tangled fishing gear or abandoned <coughs> fishing gear, uh, contaminants from illegal dumping. We see in our shoreline cleanup uh, uh, discarded and used needles and uh, garbage related to national uh, disasters. It could be, um, or like a, a tanker which has been, uh, has lost some containers and you'll see uh, orange uh, Garfield phones continuing to um, show up on beaches in, uh, uh, in the Pacific. So it, it's fairly wide ranging where shoreline litter comes from. So over the last 25 years, the Great Canadian Shoreline Cleanup has stopped about 1.2 million kilograms of litter entering our oceans. And that's equal to about the weight of seven blue whales. And in terms of the breakdown of uh, the litter within the shoreline cleanup, we do see a huge increase in the amount of tiny plastics and foam that is being collected. So a lot of smaller plastic pollution is really where, um, you know, what we're seeing in terms of the last number of years. And it has been a shift in the data in the last number of years. And so just looking about what we can do, uh, there are many simple things that we can do, and when I talk about tackling this problem, and I did mention before, the WWF as a conservation organization, we can't do it alone. We have to work with all, everyone, all interested parties to combat marine litter. We work with businesses, we work with communities, local community groups, but the most important impact, the most important change that can be made is a change that we make within ourselves. And when I 
started, I guess, on my journey of looking about at my use of plastic pollution. And the first thing I said is, okay, uh, I'm going to use all uh, recyclable, reusable bags. I'm not going to use plastic bags anymore. And with that commitment over time, I go to the grocery store. I didn't always have my reusable bag. Sometimes I use plastic bags. Sometimes I was like, you know what, I'm going to buy a reusable plastic bag at the grocery store. And over time, I just increased the amount of occurrences where I was using more reusable bags and less plastic bags. And there's no shame in using plastics. I mean, I have plastic bags in my house for, you know, for my garbage. And um, so it's all a process. It's a process that takes time to think about that, you know, the lifetime of that plastic bag and the, the choices that we can make in, as individuals on a daily basis that can help improve our environment. There's many things that we can all do. And just to take a look, um, when I go to the grocery store, if I only have a few items, I, I say, no, thank you. I don't need a bag. No, thanks. Save that bag for someone else. So you don't have to accept the bag. Look for ways in your household to reduce packaging. Uh, buy, um, buy things in bulk and buy uh, products that have less plastic packaging. Uh, one good tip that uh, I learned from Viviana from Zero Waste L and L Chapter is to go to the bulk barn. Take your uh, peanut butter jar that you finished with and you can take that to bulk barn and they will tear the weight and you can fill it up with uh, you know, the peanut butter you buy there and you are saving the environment that extra container. Some business communities within um, uh, St. John's and surrounding areas are also taking some action. And I've noticed that Home Hardware in Conception Bay South are asking for uh, people's glass bottles. And so they can take those bottles and use them as containers for folks who are buying nuts and bolts and screws. And that enables us to reduce the amount of plastic that we are using. Any glass containers or stainless steel containers, they always have a use. It's just about how we be, are creative in thinking about how we can use these things. Recycle as much as you can and think about new uses for some products. And uh, just last summer, uh, Jerry and I, we bought ourselves a new mat for our front door uh, at the Bee's Knees, which is made out of recycled fishing rope. And so just because you are finished with a product, doesn't mean that it no longer has a use or purpose for someone else. And I think it just allows us to, to rethink how we live and you know, readjust our expectations about products and look for ways where we can um, you know, certainly reduce the use of plastics um, where possible. Aside from single-use plastics or for plastic bags, there are many things, uh, other things that we can do to help the environment. Uh, always carrying a reusable water bottle. And uh, I have to say that my tap water is delicious. So I, um, I, th I don't know, I think we get kind of duped into thinking that because we buy something that it may be superior to what we have, which is free to us, um, uh, to use at any time. So certainly the use of um, Reusable drinking bottles is something that is very easy to do. Uh, carrying a canvas bag with you wherever you go. Uh, I do have some here to share with folks. I don't have enough for everyone, unfortunately. But I, at a first come, first serve basis, if you want to come and get a reusable bag, there are a few there for people who would like to take them. I see, great. I'll pass around a sheet to sign up to win the door prize. Okay, okay, so Jerry's got that covered. Um, another, another area where we can think about conservation is in our bathrooms. Uh, and I've recently started to use uh, bars of soap more frequently than we purchase uh, liquid soap and bars of shampoo more frequently than we purchase bottles of shampoo. So these are some ways you can think about reducing your plastic footprint. 
definitely always an idea and an option to tell your government what you think about plastics. And recently there was a consultation process where the government was asking for uh, comments about uh, a, a plastic bag ban. Um, at any time, you can send a letter to your Minister of Environment to let them know how you feel about a plastic bag ban. Uh, it's always good to join a local shoreline cleanup or a uh, support group or a conservation group. And when you are among like-minded individuals, it helps you make, make those better choices in terms of uh, using uh, reusable bags versus single-use bags. And also, just, just uh, don't, don't be afraid to talk about this with your friends and to, to make these decisions now. And overall, as a community, I think we need to raise the awareness level about the importance of um, reducing our plastic footprint and share tips and techniques on um, uh, easy ways that we can make some switches in our lives that are uh, you know, intentional. They may take a little bit of practice and effort for us to develop new habits, but they will pay off. Uh, you know, just in terms of the, uh, the importance of those changes in practices and behavior for the environment. So just a couple of pics from uh, my team with WWF. This is my team in Halifax that uh, once a week, well this is during the summer, they get together for a plastic free lunch. And while I work in Newfoundland, I, I kind of share my lunch with them over the phone, but I'm ensuring that I'm using all recyclable uh, and reusable products in uh, preparing my lunch. And that's, uh, that's all I have. I have a, a short video if uh, we have time. I don't know if it'll play. Uh, this here is a picture of one of our out outreach events uh, that we do around Capelin and the Capelin role in the summer months, uh, engaging local communities. And I'll end with this video.